Good afternoon everybody and a very warm welcome to Milton Hall and today is another um, mini layout update uh, the reason why I'm doing this I wasn't expected to do this today um, but I had a, so many comments so many positive comments I just wanted to thank you all for taking the time to um, to actually comment and make suggestions and everything like that which is very much appreciated um, but the crux of this video really is because I've done a little bit of extra work, which I thought I'd share with you. But also, um, Paul Goodwin had also put some comments up, which I just wanted to um, help him out with. Um, he was talking to me and asking me about the, the layout dimensions and also the geometry of it. Um, and basically, I, that's what I thought I'd cover in this video. So I thought between that and also the work that I've done, it would just make a nice little mini little video, just a brief update as to what's going on. So let me just sort of spin the camera around and I will show you what I have been doing. So the nice thing about this layout as it stands is you can actually see it all in one go. Now, to many of you it will be kind of obvious what I've done, but just in case you kind of missed any of it. Um, before, um, we used to have this which used to be like four lanes and then it used to feed into two main lines which are here and then we had a point that spurred off that way um, but I got rid of that which is what's always going to be the intention and what I've decided to do is because this line here the inside line inside main line um, is basically goes that way and this side mainly goes that way um, it made sense that the point work should start at that end coming towards me because the trains would be travelling in this direction anyway. And what I wanted to do is um, basically create some sidings. Um, and this is based, and the reason for this is to do with um, my rowing stock. Um, I've got a SEP, a VEP, and a Batman 450, and these are SEP rakes. Um, of units and they're all interconnected electrically and I don't particularly want to keep pulling them apart every time I want to use them. So bearing this in mind I thought to myself well what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little train care depot um, and basically it's going to be here. So these are still the two main lines and then what I've done is I've just added a point further down this end and then basically start fanning it out. And what I'm going to do is basically, currently what I've done is, is, is I've run out. I was quite lucky, I've managed to make the most out of what I had in terms of track work and everything like that. I've just run out of fish plates. So I've got enough track work to finish it. And basically these two um, lines will come all the way down here to make four sidings, which will be the train care depot. And there will be a scratch build involved in this as well, because um, I'm going to be making a, um, like I said, a corrugated um, track work, um, train care depot, um, which is basically um, essentially more or less like what's at Farnham, which is my local train care depot, um, which if I can put a picture up, I'll show you and you have a rough idea what I'm sort of talking about. And basically, um, it's to be able to house these fixed rakes without me having to keep taking them on and off the track. And also, um, yeah, I think I've got an extra siding or two, um, which will also help me with my DMUs, which are also electrically, electrically interconnected between the two, which again, I don't want to have to keep pulling them apart every time I want to use them. Um, my 66 here is the only one that's on the layer at the moment, and that was just pretty much because it was used as testing purposes. Um, it, I've just been running tests on it. It's not... Um, the drop wires or anything I'm not in or anything like that. This is still electrically very basic, basically done. Um, there's no drop wires because at the end of the day I'm still working on the layout itself. But I've now come to a point now where I'm thinking to myself, actually, this is how it's going to stay. There might be one exception down at the other end by the station where I might fit an additional point, um, but that might be later on, I'm not sure yet. So what I'll do is I'll just take you a little bit closer in. So here we are at the other end of the layout. And um, I just thought I'd show you um, and also to um, answer some of the comments by um, Paul Goodwin, who'd asked about the layout and the geometry of it. 
and basically like I said before it's nine foot six by four foot um, and the the way the geometry of the curves are is as you can see just to the just to the right is my permanent way set which is what I got from Backman and it comes with as well as the controller it comes with an oval track as you can see now that oval track consisted of second radius curves which are these ones these are the ones from the train pack and there's eight of them and that's how I started and um, I did I did because I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do I just thought well let me just as you saw on the floor I did have it on the floor for, for like a little while I was just using this set track just to test it these that was the set track curves I had and I'd been running the 66s which is one of my bigger locos around it and they coped with it fine but I obviously didn't want to go any tighter than that so that's why that is the minimum which is a second radius um, and I haven't had any issues with derailing it at all and the main issues that I have with derailing is always to do with the um, couplings the little links that are attached to the front of the locomotives which get caught in the tension lock couplings and for the curves, I've also been using these track spacers. You get them like from like a whole model shop. I mean, this cost me like 50p or something like that. And as you can see, um, on the bottom, it's slightly wider. And then you'll need to turn it around, it's shorter as well. So you've got two, two sort of sets. And what I do is, on the straights, I use the shorter version. And do that all the way down. And on the curves, I use the wider version. And the reason why I do that, if I just move the girder bridge, is basically, as you can see, it just, that's the spacing, that's on the wider spacing on the curves, and that's just to allow for, like, the trains overtaking each other so that the trains don't knock into each other as they're going around the bends. So that's why I use the wider ones. And this is actually my curves I've not done using the... the, the Hornby R621 really flexi track, which is what I have been using, as opposed to third and fourth radius curves, although you can use them, which would be a lot easier. It's just that I had a lot of track left behind, and I just wanted to make use out of all the track that I had without necessarily having to buy extra. So I wanted to see how this would work out for me, and it seems to be doing the job perfectly fine. So as you can see, um, I've got my Batman 450 and I've got my VEP and those are two of my three units and they're both four car units and they both electrically interconnect with one another of the coaches so that's why it's quite important to um, try and keep them on the layout as one unit all the time rather than keep swapping them over because I don't want to damage the pins that connect them between the coaches so that's the reason for doing it at the moment I've managed um, which I didn't think I'd, because I've run out of fish plates, and so I, that's why I can't fi quite finish it. But those two there will run all the way down to the end to meet up with that one right down there. And like I said, I'm going to scratch build a train care depot, which will run from about there all the way down towards the end. And this one here, where the 66 is on, I don't know if you can hear that, but that's a 450 running in the background. And um, that, where, that, that line there where the 66 is, which is this one here, um, that one is not going to be in the actual train care depot. That's just going to be just a separate line that sits beside it. And maybe that might be for the breakdown train or storage of wagons or maybe storage of another EMU unit that isn't in the actual train care depot. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing here. And... I was thinking actually on this corner here where my Prodigy Express is, is I'm trying to incorporate some some bits of scenery and things that I've liked from other my other layouts, and I'm thinking that I might possibly do a cutting on this on this bend, a small cutting. So that's what I'm thinking I'm going to be doing there, and that might very well have the folly that I had from before at, at Morwood or Beringer it's between the two on the top so I might do I might bring that back 
and do the, the rock work and the rock face, which I really enjoyed and liked about Behringer. For those who followed me from that, from that, and I might actually still continue that on that end there. Oh, sorry, let me just there you go. my little one. So on that bend there, I might still continue that. I'm not entirely certain yet, and I'm I'm thinking that maybe um, where the ends of the platforms is, I might put a level crossing there, which might then um, give an escape, obviously, for the traffic coming in and out of the station and the town and all the rest of it. So we'll see how that goes. But these are just preliminary thoughts at this end sorry about that I'm just knocking into everything so yeah so it's coming along this is virtually the, the, the track work nearly done now like I said once those two bits are all the way down the end that will be pretty much it so just before I go um, I just wanted to thank you all for your comments and suggestions which you've all been putting up which has been absolutely fantastic um, some people have suggested that maybe I'll put a station terminus along the window sill there um, but I really wanted to try and keep everything where I can within the, the confines of the layout because at the end of the day it's still my home and obviously when there's guests and things like that coming over you know it's just still got to be a home that's got to be used as a home as well as my layout so I didn't really want to start doing with what I did at Barrage and start taking it all the way around the world as it were although I did like that but like I said all comments and suggestions are welcome and until the next time from Milden Hall, it's bye for now. Bye-bye.